After almost a year of working from home now, I decided it's finally time to build a desk for my home office. The most challenging part will be the base cabinets and the drawers, so I'm starting with that first. Drawers can be scary and intimidating, but they don't have to be. So today I'll show you how to make this simple cabinet and how to easily build and install drawers. And plans are available for this build, and you'll find a link down in the description below. This cabinet will be built entirely of maple plywood, starting with this 3 quarter inch sheet that I'll use for the cabinet frame. Now typically I'll start by having my plywood cut into manageable sizes at the store, then use my track saw to break down my parts, leaving just a little extra material so I can make my final cut on the table saw. This helps ensure that I get a nice, clean, square cut. With all my cabinet pieces cut, I'm going to use my pocket hole jig to make the pocket holes and assemble the cabinet. I clamped the first side to the top of the cabinet to make sure my edges were perfectly aligned. I could then come around to the other side and secure it with some pocket screws. Before it's too late, I marked a line on both side panels so I'll have a reference line for the bottom panel. I dropped the other side panel into place and secured it with some more pocket screws. I could then easily line up my bottom panel with my reference lines, clamp it into place and secure it with a few more screws. Okay, the cabinet is assembled. All that's missing is this toe kick that I tapped into place, and then I secured it with, you guessed it, more pocket screws. All right, so with the carcass built, it's time to add some drawers. Now here's my method for figuring out the sizes of the drawers. First thing you'll need to figure out is the depth or the sides of the drawers, and that will be the same size as the drawer slides that you're going to use. So in my case, I have a 23 inch deep cabinet. I always round down to the next available uh, drawer slide size, in this case 22 inches. So that means that my sides of my drawers will be 22 inches. To figure out the width of the drawer, you'll need three dimensions. First, you'll need to measure the opening of your cabinet. You'll need to know the thickness of your drawer slides. Uh, typically, if you're using ones like these, uh, the pair will be one inch thick. And you'll need the thickness of the drawer material itself. I'm using half inch plywood, so two pieces for each side will be another inch. So you just need to take the opening, minus one inch for the slides, and minus one inch for the material of the drawer. But since half inch plywood isn't always exactly half an inch thick, instead of using a measurement, I'm going to use these two off cuts from my half inch plywood to get an exact fit on the drawers. Let me show you what I mean. So as I just mentioned, I'm using half inch plywood for the drawer boxes. I started by ripping down some strips on the table saw and then used my miter saw to break down the parts, starting with all the drawer sides first. Once my sides were cut, I double checked my cabinet opening, then subtracted one inch from my drawer slides. Mark that length on my board and set my stop block to that distance. To account for my drawer thickness on both sides, I'll place these two off cuts between my board and my stop block and this should give me the perfect size for my drawer fronts and backs. With all my drawer parts cut, I also cut my bottom panels out of quarter inch plywood. To give my drawers a little more professional look, I added edge banding to cover the exposed plywood edges, and I also pre-finished all my drawer parts. I'll be covering my cabinet finishing process both inside and out in my next video, so stay tuned for that. Before I can assemble the drawers, I need to make a small groove to fit the bottom panel. I set my blade height to half the thickness of my stock, so a quarter inch, and set my fence to 3 8 Okay, so I've got one of my drawer pieces here and there's a finished edge and a rough edge. And I want to keep the rough edge against my fence since this will be the bottom of the drawer. But rather than cut into my drawer piece, I'm going to use a test piece to dial in the groove. I did a quick check on the depth of the groove and confirmed that it was a quarter inch. I can now go ahead and run all my drawer pieces through, keeping the unfinished edge against the fence. Once all the drawers were done, I moved my fence over just a tad to widen the groove and ran my test piece through. The goal is to get a friction fit with the bottom panel, where the panel slides freely but still holds the piece without falling out. This is pretty good, but the groove felt just a sliver too wide, so I adjusted the fence ever so slightly and then grabbed one of my drawer pieces to do another test. And luckily for me, it was a perfect fit. So without touching any settings, I ran all of my pieces through to widen the grooves. 
Then once all the pieces were done, I still had one last step and that's to raise the blade and run all of my drawer backs through again to trim them to their final size. And with that, I'm ready to begin assembly. I changed my pocket hole jig settings to the half inch thickness setting and made pocket holes in all the drawer backs and fronts, making sure to make all the holes on the outside face, that is, on the opposite side to the groove. I began assembling the drawers with pocket screws starting by the front side. I could then flip up the drawer and slide in the drawer bottoms until they were seated within the groove. And then add the back piece. And here, clamps really help keep everything aligned during assembly. With the four sides secured, I could just flip the drawer over and secure the bottom panel using a few small screws. And with that, I had one solid drawer box. I repeated the process for the other drawers using three pocket holes for the larger drawer. I've used glue in the past to make drawers like this before, but I'm not really sure that's necessary to tell you the truth. Next up is installing the drawer slides. Now, ball bearing drawer slides can be pricey and add up quickly, but I found a great deal at Princess Auto. And the best thing is that I was able to order them online and they were delivered to my door in no time. I used a spacer to prop up the bottom drawer slide, lined it up flush with the edge of the cabinet, then gently pulled the slide open to expose the screw holes and added the screws. I repeated the same thing on the other side and with that, my first pair of drawer slides was installed. To install the next slides, you can either trace reference lines on the inside of your cabinet or cut spacer blocks like I did to help support the slide. And why fight gravity when you can just flip the cabinet on its side? All right, time to install the drawer boxes, and I'm using a few off cuts to raise up the drawer slightly so it won't rub against the bottom. Once the box is in, I could pull out the slides and flush them up with the front of the box, pulling the box out just far enough to expose the first screw holes. With the first screw in, I could pull the box out progressively, exposing the next screw holes. Eventually, I had to remove the drawer using the plastic tabs so I could insert the back screws. I could then push the drawer back in a little forcefully to get it in at first, but then it slides smoothly after that. Installing the next drawer was the same process, this time using larger spacers, which ultimately depends on how much space you want between your boxes. I'm leaving a little more space than usual here because I'll be using the bottom drawer as a file cabinet, so I want to leave enough clearance for the file hangers and rails. I grabbed some more 3 quarter inch plywood to cut the drawer fronts as per the plans. I'll start by installing the bottom face, then work my way up. I'll use a spacer block to help prop up the bottom front and then clamp the drawer face to the box. But this middle drawer is kind of in the way, so I'll just remove it so I can get better access. I can then get a few clamps on there and pull out the drawer so I can secure it from the inside of the drawer. Now normally you'd want to apply finish to the cabinet and the drawer fronts before this step but I'll be doing that in my next video, so for now I'll just put the drawer faces on temporarily. Using 1 8 plywood as a spacer, I worked my way upwards and finished installing the drawer fronts. Now I don't know about you, but I live in a really old house and none of the surfaces are flat, including the floors. So I can almost guarantee that this cabinet will teeter and wobble. So to remedy that, I'm going to inset some leveling feet by first adding a piece of 2x4 that I'll rip down in the middle. I countersunk a recess for the feet and then drilled a pilot hole for the stem. Then tap, tap, tap and just screwed it in. Once secured to the cabinet, I can easily adjust the feet as needed and no one will see them. I decided to go with these very contemporary edge pulls, which are really easy to install. Just center them and screw them in from the back. Super easy and they look great. As I mentioned before, I'm going to use the bottom drawer as a file cabinet. And now this is totally optional, but you can get these plastic file hanger rails and just cut them to size. Snap them in and add your hanging file folders and that's it. I'll leave a link for these and all the materials I used in this video down below.
Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to tune in for the follow-up videos where I'll finish the outside of the cabinet with super smooth paint finish and go through the process I used to finish the inside of the drawers. This cabinet will be part of a desk build I'm working on soon, so be sure to subscribe if you want to follow along. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.